A kindergarten teacher asked if anyone needed help putting on their boots. A little boy raised his hand and she went over to help him. The boots were stuck only halfway onto his little feet. She pushed and pulled and the boots still wouldn't go on. When the, sec when the second boot finally went on, she worked up quite a sweat. She almost whimpered when the little boy said, teacher, they're on the wrong feet. She looked and sure enough, they were. It wasn't any easier to pull the boots off than it was to put them on. She managed to keep her cool and together they worked to get the boots back on, this time on the right feet. He then announced, these aren't my boots. She wanted so badly to say, why didn't you say so? But instead, she struggled to help him pull the ill-footing boots off. Then he said, they're my brother's boots. My mom made me wear them. She didn't know she should laugh or cry. She mustered up grace and courage, the heck what she had left to wrestle the boots back onto his little feet again. She said, now, where are your mittens? He said, I stuffed them in the toes of my boots. Sometimes life wears us down, tests our patience. These days it might sometimes seem like our mittens are stuck in our boots as the days get shorter. Winter solstice is a pagan holiday adopted by Christians as the birth of Jesus. One of Jesus' great miracles that no one talks about is having 12 best friends in his 30s. Today, it might seem like a miracle to celebrate a meal or quality time with 12 fine folk. I believe every solstice is naturally a time for introspection. But this winter in particular has put a strain on our inner and outer resources. Most of us could benefit from nurturing and sharing a flow of joy. At solstice, we celebrate the returning light as well we should. This is also a good time of year to experience the quiet dark. The long nights encourage us to slow down, curling up with the pregnant potential of winter stillness where seeds of light are dreaming. Henry David Thoreau wrote, though I do not believe that a plant will spring up where no seed has been, I have great faith in a seed. Convince me that you have a seed there and I am prepared to expect wonders. So we plant the seeds of peace and love and wait for the returning of the light to nurture our prayerful intentions. There is great mystery as we work our way through darkness and toward the rebirth of light. Solstice is an invitation to mystery. Here's what Albert Einstein had to say about mystery. The most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. It is the source of all true art and science. To know the mysterious really exists, manifesting itself as wisdom and radiant beauty, this feeling is at the center of true religiousness. So here we are in the darkest time of the year, the sun has been in retreat and the days have gotten shorter, but we know that the sun will be returning the light will be reborn and the days will begin to grow longer again. In her poem, The Buddha's Last Instruction, Mary Oliver retells the story of the Buddha's last words. She writes, he looked into the faces of that frightened crowd and said, make yourself a light. I'm suggesting that we are called to witness the light that is born in darkness, the luminosity within the fertile dark. We need to be light for each other. 
The winter solstice invites us to come into accord with the mythology of the returning sun, to celebrate the promise of returning light, and to be reborn with the spirit of light, becoming as a child, a rebirth in the fields of unfolding mystery. Babies come into this world as a blank slate of pure innocence. We all have within us a seed of the child of spirit, born to witness wonder. Solstice is about the rebirth of light. And when we participate in the mystery, we become as a child of light, linked to the cycles and seasons of our mother earth. I heard a story about a priest who was giving a children's sermon to the whole congregation. He asked the children if any of them knew what the resurrection was. One very young boy raised his hand and said, I know that if you have a resurrection that lasts more than four hours, you are supposed to call the doctor. The innocence of children can be joyful. Here's another example. A little boy decides he wants to skip school. So he calls the elementary school office and tries to deepen his voice. Donald Falk cannot go to school today because he is sick. The woman on the other end of the phone asks, to whom am I speaking? The little boy says, this is my father. Jesus suggests that we become as little children. He's not the only one. Nietzsche suggests that our final transformation is to become an innocent child, a wheel rolling out of its own center, a sacred yes with its own will and direction. We can cultivate the joy and innocence of seeing the world as new, as if for the first time. We can enter the spirit of solstice through the joys of giving and receiving the gifts of our heart and spirit, embracing our circles of connection and community. We can love each other or lighten the load of another with a heartfelt smile, spreading good cheer, generosity, and goodwill. Peace on earth. Goodwill to man. Henry Longfellow wrote those words as repeating lines to a poem in 1864. If you are alert to dates, you'll realize that this was written during the Civil War. The sentiment is noble, and Longfellow was well aware that hate is strong and masks a song, which comes from the same poem. But he, preserved, he persevered with his optimism, what we could call poetic hope, a rebirth of what is possible. I think we can forgive him for excluding women. He wrote with the language of the time. Well, actually, he was inspired by biblical times. The repeating line about goodwill is borrowed from the Bible, Luke 2.14. Put Longfellow's quote on a Christmas card and you have a nice sentiment. Intended as an act of generosity and of connecting with the spirit of the season and the world opens up. A gesture of goodwill can deepen through a connection with the wholeness of being. When we are intending goodwill, we are extending a full bodied blessing. It doesn't need to be perfect, only genuine. When we are open to echoes of mystery, our inner light becomes magnified. The goodwill of a group can acquire synergy. Good tidings and goodwill toward men, women, and children. If your participation in the world extends to birds and bees, ETs and trees, then goodwill toward birds and bees, ETs and trees as well. It's a practice bringing light from the darkness. Peace on earth. 
It's a way of conjuring and sharing the better angels of our nature and extending goodwill as an intentional blessing. Words like peace and goodwill can be fleeting thoughts, abstractions that seem like nice ideas, or the words can point to the source of their meaning, words brought to life through our yearning or intentional participation, opening up to the field of your experience as if for the first time. That's rebirth. For as often as you can remember to do so, light your inner candle and shine with goodwill. The season awaits our participation, our, part, our preparation for the rebirth of light. So let's take a contemplative moment, a meditation minute to intend and send season's greetings, the spirit of love and peace on earth, good tidings towards someone specific or to all sentient beings. So as we do this, if you'd like, you can close your eyes. You are free to follow my gentle guidance or to hold space in any way you choose. And I'll signal the beginning carefully with the sound of the bell. <whistles> Invoke the spirit of love and goodwill in your own heart. The rebirth of light, a joyful spirit just waiting for you to pay attention. Borrow from my words if you'd like. Then bring someone specific to mind, someone you know or a group of folks and imagine sharing goodwill as a feeling tone or gift, just sending or feeling goodwill with them. Share your love. Peace on earth, goodwill as a gesture of light in the aliveness of being. Thank you. You can open your eyes if you'd like. Take a deep breath if you'd like. And now I'm going to invite you to wish a soulful solstice greetings and goodwill to folks on your Zoom screen. For example, you could say, I wish you a heartfelt sparkling solstice or Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Can you share some, some inner shine? Can you spread goodwill heart to heart? I encourage you to use your own words and let's go ahead in a moment here and unmute everyone for less than a minute and we'll allow the quality of sound to be what it will as we wish each other, whoever you want, however you wish to do it, the very best this solstice season. Now.
So hopefully everyone's unmuted and say, you know. We send you all our love and good thoughts. We can do it all together if we want. I can see. Here he <laughs> Peace be with Great you, all of you. Joy and peace and happiness. Yes. Marty and Betsy, Susan and Deb. Fairness of much. spirit. And wonderful, Mark. wonderful time. We have solstice and happy new year. Darkness that we have mm -hmm. and a return. I mm -hmm. all ready as it comes back. Hey, everybody. Mm -hmm. Have a good holiday. Send your love. Luke, I send you love. Charlie. Be good to one another and party on, dudes. <laughs> yeah. What Marty said. Happy Santa Lucia to all of you. Happy skating. <laughs> the, the sacredness of all beings. Uh, such a joy. Thank you. I expected that to be a little more cacophonous than it was. It's not to be just a, we're also polite, which is nice. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. You never know. Mm -hmm. We're all loving too, I think. I can feel that. I don't think it's my imagination. I know that wasn't perfect, but um, guess what? Life has imperfection. And what we hold in our hearts can be significant. There are a great variety of miracles and religious experience, but mm. perhaps the greatest miracle is to awaken to creation and see the world as if for the first time. Become as a child of light and it can be miraculous to find our way in the dark, following the right star home. So thank you for sharing this time together. <laughs>